Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts and today's video is all about my new sewing machine. I have a Juki HZL F600 and I say new because I got her a couple weeks before Christmas and now we are approaching the end of February. So it's only been a couple of months. However, I have made several quilts in that amount of time and so uh, I thought it would be a good time to come in and talk about my machine and Miss Catherine about a week ago asked if I would do a video about the pros and cons of my machine. So here you can see I got the Juki F600 and uh, so far I'm loving this machine. Okay, nothing was wrong with my other sewing machine. She is still right here and I love that machine. However, this machine offered some features that I was really, really excited about. So just to let you know, this is not a paid video or a sponsored video. I bought my sewing machine from Sewing Machines Plus. It's actually the second machine we've ever bought from them and they are not paying or sponsoring this video. And the makers of this machine are not uh, paying me or sponsoring my video whatsoever. This is going to be my own personal experience with the machine, a totally unbiased, uh, point of view about what I like about this machine and to be honest I really can't say yet anything that I don't like. I'm sure that as we go on and work with this machine there may be personality issues that uh, I'm not crazy about but so far so good. So I thought I'd bring you along and we're going to talk about the features of this machine just to let you know with this machine there are three different machines in this series okay there's the F300 the F400 and the F600 and so all machines have different features as we go from machine to machine so in this video I'm talking about the F600 and uh, so it has a little bit more features than the other models and we might go into that a little bit in this video so come on with me and I'll show you all about my machine. All right, we're gonna start this video first. From my point of view, I'm gonna show you some of the things that I really like about this machine. You can see it comes with this uh, and it opens up. So it's like a little storage for all of the accessories. You can see I've taken all mine out because I put mine in a little drawer next to my sewing machine. I really like this. It gives a good solid base that fits onto your machine. However, I don't do any garment sewing or any of that kind of stuff. I strictly do quilting related sewing and it comes with this table. It's an extension table. It gives you a nice large flat surface to make your quilts and quilt your quilts. So let me uh, just measure that so I can tell you it doesn't even all fit into the picture but it extends your work surface from your needle let's just use that as a reference point wrong way Lisa from the needle to the end of your work table is 14 inches so that's a nice good extra work surface that's nice and level with your the bed of your machine and it is 13 inches from the back of your machine to the front of the table. So that's a nice, good size work surface. I really like that. And mine stays on all the time. Even if I'm just piecing two and a half inch blocks, <laughs> this stays on all the time. And it's just something that I've really gotten used to. But it does come off and it has a free arm if you do garment sewing. Uh, you could sew the cuffs of your sleeves and things like that. I just leave my table on. So you can see it comes with a nice hefty manual that goes through all kinds of stuff. I mean, it really shows you and it's basic and easy instructions on everything. Uh, so it is a nice size manual. Let's see, let's talk about the throat space of the machine because that was one of the features that I really liked uh, that my ma other, mas other machine was lacking in a little bit. And let's swing you over just a little bit before we change views. From this part of your machine to the sewing needle, 
there is eight inches. So you have eight inches all along through here to maneuver your quilt. And you know, you, you might think that eight inches is not a lot, but <laughs> size does matter. That sounds horrible, right? But my other machine has about four inches. And so quilting larger quilts in that throat space was really difficult and even piecing some stuff or doing a satin stitcher around and you know applique it all was a little bit more difficult in a smaller throat space so now I have you know twice the amount of room here and from this view that doesn't really look big but I'm gonna change the camera position and you'll actually see this space and let's turn this on it has LED lights all in your harp space, so that really brightens up and gives you a better view of what you're working on. So I really like the extra lights all through here. Let's see, and also one thing that I wanted to point out is that if you remove this table, underneath is a little lever that you switch over and it lowers your feed dogs. And so my other machine did not have that feature there was a little plate that you covered the feed dogs and so you could do free motion work and so with this machine you can lower the feed dogs and I love that <laughs> so that was an extra little bonus uh, that helped me make up my mus my mind on this machine so let me move you over and show you some other things that I really really like all right here we go I had the top of my machine open so usually it's like that look at this very large handle this is a pretty weighty uh, sewing machine so the big solid handle to lift and move this machine I really really like that also this little dial here you can adjust the pressure of your presser foot and so if you do a lot of memory quilts quilts with clothing that's kind of squishy and I've talked about that a lot in my other videos and one of the reasons why I really like the glue basting to help keep your blocks from squishing and you know really stretching that material this little lever you can adjust the pressure on your presser foot so I love that that has helped so much in the last t-shirt quilts that I've made so that's like an extra little bonus that I really really like now most of the time, because you can see I have my uh, thread cone holder behind my machine and I usually work with a thread cone, uh, I usually sew with this top up. And so that's so I can bring my thread through here and use this little guide here and it's very easy to use the uh, thread stand holder. But look at all of these stitches. <laughs> Now, I may or may not ever use all of these stitches. Uh, so far, I've only dabbled with this and that, but primarily, I want to show you this little stitch right here. I think that's the one. This little button, if you push the little pointy finger and you push number two, gives you an automatic very accurate quarter inch seam allowance and I'll show you that as we lower the camera down so if you have a hard time judging your seam allowance when you're piecing this machine has that feature all built in for quilters I also want you to focus on this little gray box uh, it has random stitches and so here you can see your blanket stitch all of the stitches like when it comes into your applique all of them are the same width that's just you know your standard stitch however down here if you see that uh, it does it randomly so if you want your stitches long medium short it does that for you I love that I haven't messed with it a lot because I haven't had time to just play around with my machine but I love having the option of random stitches so let's talk about all these stitches with the F600. There are 225 different stitches. With the F400, you get 157. 
and with the F300 you get 105 and 105 is still that's a lot of different stitches to uh, have and to play with with the F600 you get four different font letter styles um, so as a con when we first got my machine of course we were playing with everything and not really making anything but just experimenting uh, you know these are a nice feature to have However, it's not like an embroidery machine that does a very nice fancy stitch. Uh, but if you wanted to make tags or labels for clothing and you wanted to say, this is Scott's shirt, <laughs> you know, so put his name on a label, you could really easily do that. Uh, and the other two models have letters, but uh, maybe not four different kinds. So, and if you do buttonholes, I don't make garments, but if you make buttonholes, there are all of these different kinds of buttonholes, and you should see the buttonhole presser foot for this machine. I have never seen one like it. Uh, there are videos on YouTube that demonstrate how to use that. If that is a feature that, you know, is a must-have for your machine, I really recommend watching some of those videos because... I don't make buttonholes, <laughs> but they do have some awesome videos, and they rave about the buttonhole features with this machine and the heavy-duty buttonhole foot that uh, attaches to this machine. I just don't have a lot of experience to talk about that. So you can see, uh, let's point you down a little bit and look this way. Uh, there's a guide that shows you how to thread your machine and how to do a bobbin. A bobbin. Let me, do I have any empty bobbins? Let me pause this for a second. I'm going to show you how easy it is to wind a bobbin. Okay, we're back. I'm going to go ahead and put a bobbin right there. Now, granted, I am coming from a thread cone stand holder in the back of my machine so I'm going to use this little guide if you were using smaller spools you would not use this guide and you could put your spool right here so I have it going through that little guide in the back we're going to thread through here around this post around the tension just like that and with this machine you just wrap your thread around the bobbin a few times like that and it has four cutters all the way around the bottom sorry my heater is going to turn on that allow you at any position to cut your thread just like that and wind your bobbin so there we will wind that bobbin just like that so you can see how easy that is We'll go ahead and stop that. And, of course, you have your tension guide for your top tension. And uh, that's pretty basic on all your machines. And when you're ready to thread your machine, you just take your thread out of those two guides. And you go simply around the top and bring it down. So, yes, look at all of those stitches and how easy it is to wind a bobbin and cut your thread. My other machine did not have that little feature, so I'm loving that. Let's bring you down and get a better look at the bottom of our machine. Okay, we're looking at the bottom of the machine. Now, I wanted to bring you as close as possible so you could really see. However, I wanted everything to fit in the picture, so we're not really, really close up, but you can see the harp space again that was eight inches from this part of your machine to the needle and it does have the LED lights which makes it really bright and uh, really lights up your work so you can see really really well so you have all of these buttons and it goes through all of the stitches that I showed you above one of the things that I really really like about this machine so when you first turn it on you get your basic straight stitch that's just the standard straight stitch that uh, we all use. No matter what stitch you want to do, it shows you on the screen which foot to put on your machine. So there's no guesswork. <laughs> I, 
I hardly ever have to look at the manual to figure out what foot I'm supposed to be using because it tells you. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Uh, and so speaking of feet with the machine, the F600 comes with so many feet. Uh, let me put a picture right here of all of the feet that were included with the F600. Now keep in mind, if you purchase the F400 or the F300, uh, some of the feet do not come standard with those two models. However, with the F600, you get all of those feet. I really love that, and I'm gonna reach through here. I'm so sorry. I really love, where is it? Because I'm a quilter. It came with a free motion or a darning foot, just like that, and it is adjustable. My other foot with my other machine is not adjustable. It's just the standard one size does everything. This one, if you're working on a quilt that has very thin batting, you can lower the foot. If you're working on a foot on a quilt that has uh, a very high loft, like polyester batting, and it's thick, you can adjust the height of your foot so the quilt glides in your machine much easier so I love that it came standard with my machine I did however just op uh, order and it's on its way a foot for my machine that has an open view so it's not an all closed circle there's an opening right here which allows you to see a little bit better so that does not come standard I did have to order that and I'll possibly show you that when it comes in or you'll see me using it in future videos. But I love that the machine came with that foot. It also has, and let me see if I can find it. It is somewhere, not in that drawer. Not in that drawer, somewhere I've put a little thread guide that attaches to the standard foot that I'm using now. So if you are quilting and you want all of your quilting lines to be one inch away from each other, it's a little guide that attaches right to the back and it comes out and it's a little guide to help you stay uh, perfectly spaced and that's adjustable. So I really, really like that. It does have an automatic thread cutter. So uh, my other machine did not have that. You can push this button and it'll cut your threads for you. So I'm loving that. So far I have not had any issues with it not cutting or any of that. I will say that when it cuts your thread, uh, it does leave a short tail about like that, if you can see that. And sometimes I have had my needle come unthreaded when I get ready to start a new piece. And so if you call that a con, <laughs> that would be, I guess, a con. But I just always double check to make sure that it's still threaded when I start. The bobbin is very easy to, um, to load and it has a thread cutter. So let me show you that. And I do think my fingers will be in the way, but we have a bobbin. We'll put that down in there. And it has a little guide that shows you how to thread your bobbin. And just like that, cut your extra thread off. It has, uh, so it's a top loading bobbin with a clear plastic top that just snaps right into place. Oh, I'm sorry. And so you can see how much thread is on your bobbin unless you're using black and then I have a hard time seeing. <laughs> but you can see down and see how close you are to running out of thread. So I really like that. And you can see all of the different guides. If you do garment piecing, I don't know what any of these guides are for. <laughs> but uh, they're there if you uh, like to use those. Let me see, I'm gonna pause and think about the other things that I really, really wanted to show you. Okay, coming back, uh, I wanted to show you uh, my 
needle's not threaded. But remember when I said that there was a special feature for a quarter inch seam allowance? Let's turn off the machine real quick. And let's turn it back on. Just like that. Now when you first turn on your machine, it's set to the standard straight stitch. Let's say you're ready to start piecing. To set your needle for a quarter inch seam allowance, it is this easy. <laughs> and now if you line your work up with the standard foot, the A foot, with the edge of your foot, you get a quarter inch seam allowance and it's very accurate. So how easy was that to set up to get ready to start piecing? Uh, I also wanted to say that there is a stitch in the ditch foot, which I've been experimenting with on some projects. And so far, I really like that. That was one of the feet that was included with this machine. I did not have a stitch in the ditch foot with my other machine. And there is a knee lift. So let me just point you right here to this button. I did not have a knee lift with my other machine. And uh, so... That's taking some getting used to. I would not say it's a con because I wanted this feature. It just takes me some getting used to uh, to remember to move my knee and not automatically stick my hand up and raise the presser foot. <laughs> but I love the, the option of uh, just doing applique work or whatever you're doing and lifting the presser foot just enough to turn your work without having to remove your hands from your work to do it. So I love that feature. And let's see, what else did I want to mention? I feel like I'm forgetting stuff. There's so many different features with this machine. So what I'd really recommend if you are thinking about purchasing this machine is to check out uh, the store Secariat and they list all of the options. And they'll do that for the F300, 400, and 600 so you can see you know, maybe you don't need all of these options, and uh, so you want a different model. I really recommend doing that before you buy any machine, not just this one. Really do your research and uh, look for the things that are must-haves for you and what you like to do. Let me pause and think of some other things because I feel like I am forgetting something. Okay, coming back. <laughs> uh, I did want to talk about the foot pedal because I was asked the pros and cons of this machine. This is certainly not a con. I'm going to try to show you the foot of my machine down on my floor. It is a large, large foot for the machine, which I really like. Uh, it comes set up so that... It does several different functions. Let me move this. I'm trying not to make you seasick. There. Let's get that view. <laughs> it comes uh, automatic so that it's set up to do several functions. If you push forward on the foot, it goes and it sews. And if you take your heel and push back on the, on the foot pedal, it cuts your thread, which... I thought was going to be really awesome. However, when I was quilting along on my quilts, I'd accidentally push the back and I'd cut my thread. And so that is user error and something that I have to get used to. And it does have the option to turn that function off. So I have mine set to off until I get used to working with that function. And I may not ever turn that back on <laughs> because I did find that uh, fairly frustrating and again it's just something that with my other sewing machine wasn't there and so I didn't have to think about it and so uh, that's something if you might actually really like that so we're all different and that's okay let me go ahead and uh, rethread my needle and I'm going to show you how this machine sounds while I am piecing because I love the quality of the stitch and um, and so far it performs very nicely. So I'll show you that before we go. 
Okay, now we can see our work surface a little bit easier. It does have the feature to automatically thread your machine. So we will do that. Just like that, the needle is threaded through and I'm being a little bit awkward because I'm trying not to hit the camera anymore today or put my big hand in the way. So just like that, we've threaded the needle and I'll go ahead and it's already set up to a quarter inch seam allowance. I have an extra little snippet of binding. I really want you to see the stitch quality and um, how the machine sounds because to me it sounds so nice. And really all of these features that I've showed you today really come up to a hill of beans if the quality of the stitch of the machine is poor. You could have 5,000 stitches on your machine, but if you're not happy with the stitch quality, you're never really going to be happy with the machine, right? So uh, I want you to see the stitch quality and how the machine sounds, and it does have the needle up and down feature, so we'll put the needle in the down position. Bring that thread back out of the way and we will sew. And we will cut the thread. So just like that, there is our quarter inch and uh, of course I used black thread so you're not going to be able to see the st stitches so well. Maybe you can see that. They are all perfectly uniform and the tension is beautiful on both sides. And this is a heavy duty machine. Now um, before I bought this machine I watched every video I could find. And I will recommend the Crafty Gemini. She does a great review of this machine. And she talks about all of the features. Probably way better than I just showed you. And what sold me on this machine. Because I do a lot of memory quilts. Is the fact that uh, this machine is a heavy duty machine. She layered I think it was like up to 8 layers of denim fabric which I use in my memory quilts, eight layers, and it sewed right through them just like this. And for me, I was sold right there. <laughs> so that's just me and the uses that I get out of this machine. And uh, I did want to mention this before we go, because if you do a lot of um, traveling with your machine, if you go to meets and sew-alongs and retreats. It does have a hardcover case that really protects your uh, machine. And so I would recommend um, really going to a listing that shows you this machine and all of the things that it comes with because I am probably leaving out a good amount of features that you might be interested in that it actually comes with. But this is my overall review and what I love about the machine so far and my opinions about some other things that are probably things that I need to get used to because I worked with my machine, my other machine, for so long and knew it like the back of my hand. So as with any new machine, it really takes some time to get to know the features and, uh, and to work with it and develop a relationship with your machine. Okay, if you have any questions, I would love to help. Let me just bring you out and show you one more time a full view of this machine. So here's a little bit of a different view so you can see it from all different angles. If you have any questions, I would love to help. Again, uh, this is just my opinions, the things that I was really interested in if I was going to purchase a new machine, the things that I wanted, the features that I wanted in a newer machine. And uh, so they might matter to you and they uh, might not be so important to you in the way that you plan to use the machine. 
questions, jump down to the comment sec section below. And uh, yeah, so this is my new machine and I still have not figured out a name for it. Uh, but I have a few really great suggestions, but I'm I'm still trying to figure out her personality before I finalize on her name. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you all really soon. Bye.